Hi, I just wanted to mention something before the show. If you've been to the website, you may see that I post my blog as a comic. Well, if you've ever wondered where it all began, how it all started, or just wanted to check it out from the beginning, or the fact that it's not necessarily the easiest way to look at it if you want to see more of them. So I set up an email subscription where you can just sign up and it will send you a comic each day. Go to AmericanBandito.com slash book. I couldn't think of a better name to put. Book seemed easy. It's one word. Each day, I will just send you a page from the daily blog. When you go to that page, you'll see the very first one that I did. It's free. If it's not for you, you can just unsubscribe. So if you want to check it out, go to AmericanBandito.com slash book. Now here's the show. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. I mentioned in the past few episodes my pop-up interview booth that I did earlier this year at Hibernation Liberation. One of the people that stopped by was someone I knew from a place I used to work at. I had no idea that she was involved in making films. And not only that, but... I come to find out that the movie that she just finished working on is one that my friend Eric Bruzewitz, who's in my band Lorenzo's Music, had just finished editing the sound for. I mean, seriously, how did, how did I not know any of this? Sarah Bartash, and uh, one of the things that I do was, actually I was a producer of The New World Horror, which was a Wisconsin-based horror movie that just had its premiere last month here in Madison. So I think my keyboardist did the soundtrack for that, Eric Bruzewitz. Really? Yes. Well, this is so hilarious because so Eric came on um, in post uh, after we'd done all the filming. We did, actually filmed in 2014 um, down in Janesville, like all through the summer. And then afterwards, there's a lot of work that has to be done with um, sound and uh, editing and color correction and such. And Eric came on board and was um, instrumental, you know, no pun intended, uh, being that he's a keyboardist, but uh, in in making the film happen, and we have still not met me and me and Eric. <laughs> you were the reason that he hasn't shown up to our band practice in two months. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so, and, and it was funny because I remember a couple of years ago we went to the film fest. I think it was two years now. And all of a sudden, they're showing the you know the intro segment. I'm like, wait, that's Sarah up there. What's she doing in this? Yeah, that was that was actually like the first year after we um, had finished uh, principal photography, and I was talking with the director, and I was like, they're asking for people to go in, and and we both Adam Shabo, who's the director of the of the New World Horror, and I were involved with a um, a media site called Dane 101, which was here in Madison in the past. Jesse. Yeah, and Jesse Russell, um, and so I grabbed, uh, and so we used to cover the heck out of the. Uh, film fest. And so I was like, come on, Adam, let's go and like talk about, you know, because they were like, share your stories and stuff like that. And yeah, I ended up getting a quote about like the the curtain in the Elvium or something like that being used in their in their trailer. And it's so funny. I worked with you. How long did we work together? Like maybe a year? Maybe a year. I'd maybe. And I had no idea that you did film. Um, I, I do things. So actually, like... Oh, I, I didn't realize you were a professional thing doer. Yeah, I do things. Um, so, like, we had finished up with Dane 101. It had closed up because at, um, J, uh, Jesse had moved uh, to California. And we'd kind of limped it along for maybe a year. And then we're like, you know what? We got a close-up shop. We have other things that we need to do. The, the whole, you know, uh, editorial board kind of made the decision. So this was actually the first year that... A, I was, I was not having Dane 101 to do, and B, I had uh, quit my job at, uh, I worked at the House in the Rock Resort doing, um, Did you really? yeah, doing event planning and um, running the, uh, the, I was a sales manager there. Okay. So, but that was every weekend. I mean, that was like weddings and events and things like that. So I was like, I have my weekends free. I should do something. So I went to Adam, who had written this Tea Party zombie movie, and I said, Hey Adam, I'll I'll help you do props or something because I used to do props in college, and that's how it all started. Going to have more showings. We're going to come out with the uh, DVD. So uh, we're just all kind of recuperating after we did this big push to get the premiere out. Right. Um, you know, for a number of reasons. And yeah, oh yeah, we have to. It, it'll show again. Is there a website for it? Uh, Thenewworldhorror.com. All right, that's simple enough. Today I'm going to be talking with an illustrator named Eli Quinn. Eli, I believe, had messaged me on the American Bandito Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. So I asked if he wanted to meet with me. He's done a lot of album artwork for bands, including the Madison-based band Droids Attack. We decided to meet at the Bariques in his neighborhood on McKee Road out in Fitchburg. I'm on all these pages on Facebook. There's one called 
doom stoner stu sludge death metal or something like that. With my art, obviously, it's very psychedelic and surreal, so it appeals to a lot of those people. I, I'm posting in there, I'm posting songs, I'm doing this and that. Most of the time, like, people post, like, memes. I'll post, like, something I did, like, you know, art-wise. But we'll post about music a lot. I mean, I've learned about a lot of really cool bands through there. That's how I hooked up with the guitar pedal guy, and that's how I hooked up with uh, Kitchen Witch and Dune. Like, last year I did a vinyl album cover for a band from Australia and one from Scotland. It was amazing. And both bands are amazing, by the way. I mean, like, I would do art for anybody. Like, I do art for Justin Bieber if he gave me enough money. I'm like, you know, Justin Bieber, give me as much money as possible. I just don't have to listen to it because it's, you know, harmful to my ear. So that's also kind of a component. It's like, I would do art for anybody. So when people have you do this, like, do they give you notes on what they want or they go, hey, they already saw something they liked and they say, we want to use this or something like that? It's really kind of back and forth. Dune, those guys, at least one of them was an artist in his own right. So they had lots of ideas. I think we worked it out like really well. We did like back and forth, like I, I did like some digital stuff, like I'll draw it on the computer first because it's easy that way, right? And then eventually I'll take it to ink, I'll start to do my, my, my line work and stuff. And that's when I tell people, like I tell bands, okay, you can't really like go back on that. Cause it's like, you know, I'm not gonna like white out a big section of paper or whatever. As you may or may not know, like Droids Attack and me, we've had like a really huge collaboration. Yeah. I'm friends with all guys in the band. Brad is amazingly creative, and I did all the visuals for their last album. A lot of times, you know how it is. I mean, you're in a band yourself. You know, and it's like sometimes you're just like, boom, stamp something on, let's get it done, let's get it out there, whatever. He was putting all this thought into like the visuals of it because it's like you hear it, but it's like, how are you going to do it in another sense? How are you going to do it like tactily, visually, you know, all that kind of stuff? And I really appreciate that. Sometimes a band comes by, it's like, you know, hey man, we can pay you 20 bucks. And I'm like, well, you know, I can make more working on Taco Bell. How do you work out the commission for that? When they ask you, do you have a set rate or how do you decide? I actually made a, a doc. I used to just kind of like float around with it. And I actually like wrote like out a document about it, you know, saying like, okay, these are the set rules. Like kind of saying like what I do. But with, with bands, yeah, I, I have started to do a thing where I say, hey, you know, here's my rate. For Dune, like for instance, I did the cover for, well, I don't really want to quote like the whole numbers and stuff like that. But it's, it's really not that much. Do you go like, this is about how much my time is worth? I mean, do you figure it out that way? Or do you have set pieces where you go, okay, for one color, black and white art, it's this? Like, I guess I'm saying, how do you determine the range? Yeah, it depends. Like, if someone says, I want a shirt where you just have, like, a, a logo, that's one thing. If you want, like, a full illustration, I spend a lot of time on that stuff. Time, 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 time. The most amount I ever got for, like, an album cover was $300. When it's itemized comes to probably like five dollars an hour so i set a few like boundaries kind of telling people hey i'm not a student anymore like students would do that maybe i i tell people hey you know this is what you're gonna get if that's not cool for you that's cool too i also say because like a lot of bands have like no money they just got done spending all their money on making an album exactly On your site, it says that you do 2D and 3D. Now, 2D is just basically drawing. So what about the 3D? Like, how did you... That's something where you can't just get into 3D art. You have to learn about it. What type of 3D art are you doing? Well, I got into 3D art because after I graduated from MITC, I started working for a video game place, Human Head Studios. Okay. Initially, it was like we were using the Unreal 1 engine, which doesn't have normal maps or specular maps or any sort of separated maps. It just has a flat map. Right? So basically it's like, okay, if you have a texture, you have to draw those shadows underneath the texture. Like if it's like a brick wall, you draw the shadows underneath it because the engine cannot render those. But it was interesting because the light was flat and you had to fake a lot of stuff because the graphics engines just didn't catch up. Like a year or two later, we learned, okay, we're going to be using the Doom 3 engine. Now you guys got to learn how to model. So, hey, 
here's 3D Studio Max. Learn how to model with that. I had never used it because when I came out of school, all I knew how to do was draw. I had absolutely no experience with any 3D tools at all. I would used Photoshop and Illustrator and like all that Adobe stuff. When I started working in Human Head, yeah, they were like, hey guys, you gotta use 3D Studio Max. So we learned it. And now I'm like a huge fan. I love 3D Studio Max and Maya and ZBrush and all these 3D pro these programs. I would definitely not call myself an expert in terms of like animation or whatever. I'm, I'm pretty good at like sculpting in 3D. My extent of it is I've done Blender to a point. Yeah. That, that was about it. Same kind of thing, you yeah. know. I use Blender for a bit because Blender's free. It's, it's good for students. Blender in comparison to like Max and Maya is how you model things in Blender is like just kind of, it's just really strange. It's kind of like GIMP compared to Photoshop. It's like, yeah, one's free, one's whatever. I mean. Max and Maya is like, boom, that's where it's at. Maya for animation, Max for modeling. That's it. This dude, again, he sort of contacted me out of the blue. He has a pedal he's been working on for years. Like, he's an engineer. He does like he has a regular job, you know, he, all this regular stuff. But this is like his passion. He's been working for like four years. He's got all the transistor like pictures of stuff like that. And like you know, I've seen it on Facebook. I mean, I don't understand it because I mean, I'm not an engineer. He's not quite sure what he wants quite yet, but he knows that with pedals you have to brand it in a very sort of like vibrant way, like especially when you're coming out. Because it's like, okay, here's my pedal. I'm some, you know quote unquote nobody from wherever, my pedal might sound better than everybody's pedal, but who cares, unless it looks cool, right? So he and I had a, like a long conversation about marketing and branding and that kind of thing. Do we want this to be like too like a cult? Do we want this to be like, I go from dark to light. Like I'm not always like steeped in the dark. I'm not like in that like, you know, area. I would word it like from very thick to very thin and intricate. And that's where it comes from in the sense that it starts out that way, but then the closer you look, it's more technical looking, kind of like wires or a motherboard or something like that as you get down closer to it. And that's my basic way of describing it, from what I've seen of your line art, that is. Oh, that was that was my take on it. I don't, I don't know if you actually have a specific explanation of what it is or not, but there's one for you. Well, I like that. I like, I like to hear what people's uh, interpretations of my art are. Because I never know. Because, again, I work in a vacuum I'm like a hermit. I barely ever leave the house. And you've never done a project like this before? No, I have not. Like, I've had, like, a couple of bucket list things that I can scratch off, right? Art's on a couple of vinyls, at least. I have them. I've listened to them. The guitar pedal thing is, like, he sent me the template. You know, he had the, the dials. And he said, dude, I don't know anything about art. I don't know anything about marketing. I don't know anything about branding. He and I would talk for hours and hours and hours. He wants to make like four pedals, I think. I mean, I mean, but he's got like all these things he's been tinkering with because he's been like an engineer working for the man. He's like, you know, looking to kind of go out on his own. And he's like, with guitar pedals, you got to make them look cool these days. So you're kind of concepting it together, but at the same time, learning the concept together. Yeah. I like that. He's, uh, he's really cool. He's really thoughtful. you start saying can we do something new that's like custom I mean like doing that custom thing like when I was doing with that band Dune it was very cool because like I got like named as like a couple of lists like you know best album covers of 2017 and like I said again I'd work with Justin Bieber even if I hate his music you know I'd work with Avril Lavigne or whomever but it's like Droids Attack and like Dune and Kitchen Witch and all these bands I've worked with and Brainerd they have really good music. Okay. So that's also important to me. I mean, in a way, it, it's it's not important in terms of the paycheck, but it's important in terms of the inspiration. You get transported, like when you hear Dune's album, it's like this real, like this concept sort of album, and it's like, it's hard to explain. Because of things like having to pay for bills, but you still would like to do art, I mean, are there things that moving forward you're trying to do or that you're trying out to maybe even take 
the artwork that you're doing a little farther. Ideally, I would like to be a self-employed illustrator because, like I said, I am not shy. Like, everything else I hate about myself. But in terms of my illustration, I'll always say I think I'm one of the best illustrators in Madison, easily. I would love to work for some bigger bands. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a hard rock metal stoner, whatever guy. Obviously, being self-employed, kind of like being like Aaron Horky or those guys or Emic, would be the goal. But right now, I'm just looking for like you know, kind of a solid goal where I'm not just working at home. Have you ever done something for one of those guys and just submitted it to him? Yeah, Soundgarden actually, I did is through Creative Allies back before I realized that they were just doing like this crowdsourcing thingy. And I drew like this completely custom Soundgarden poster for King Animal. And they retweeted it. I mean, it was through like Twitter and Instagram. And they actually mentioned my thing. And I was like, that was like amazing to me. Cause like, I know that it wasn't done by, you know, Chris Cornell or, you know, Kim Thale or anybody like that. But at the same time, I was like, wow, Soundgarden retweeted my thing. And that was amazing to me. I just love music, man. And like, to me, it's like, I'd love to like collaborate with musicians and I'd love to collaborate with like some of the musicians I'm like really big fans of. Right now I'm, I'm doing the Madison thing. And that's cool to me too. Cause I mean, bands like, I mean, Droids Attack is a fantastic band. You know, I did stuff for Conscious Object, Brainerd, some international stuff, Australia and Scotland. It's just kind of groovy. It's like, I'll never meet those dudes. Yeah, especially in terms of like illustration, I want to kind of like go in that direction where it's like, yeah, I'd love to be sort of an autonomous illustrator. But I'd rather have something where I could do a daily gig and have that stuff be like, you know, my side project or, you know, my personal stuff. It's also nice to have health benefits, right? Right. Eli had mentioned to me that he barely leaves the house and meeting me was not something he would normally do. And I was in the same mindset the last few interviews. I told you about how taking a mic and holding it up in the middle of a crowded public place was really, really intimidating. Online, Eli already has taken tons of risks that had got him some cool projects because of that. Next week, I'm going to talk with someone who I met at a local animation event. Don't forget you can subscribe to the show at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. And until next time, so long.